During this year's Arkansas Backwoods Challenge, I met up with Eddie Sanchez and his Yamaha Sidewinder powered Highlander. But first, here's a taste of Arkansas. All right, so back to back to business. Okay, I'm going to walk through this. What'll happen? I can tell you from experience. You'll get traveling here, and you'll be looking for it. Next thing you know, you'll be over here. They even had a few returning competitors. This event and challenge utilizes three different runways and depending on where you're standing, the views are amazing. I'm Eddie Sanchez. I live in Willis, Texas. Uh, that's about 50 miles north of Houston, and uh, that's where I grew up. Uh, I work for the airlines now. I've been working for, I uh, started with Continental Airlines when I was 21, and I'm still there. After 33 years now, it's uh, called United, and that's what I do for my day job. But um, I, I just love flying this thing, and um, my wife comes with me and we have a great time and love hanging out with all these people and and discovering what this new airplane can do. I'm still got I still got a lot of discovery to go actually, but um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So this is uh, a Just Aircraft Highlander. Um, this is my second Highlander. My first Highlander was called Devil Girl. This one's called Devil Girl Two. Devil Girl Two. And uh, my first Highlander was uh, just a regular uh, length Highlander. This one's an XL, so it's about two feet longer. Uh, my previous airplane had a um, Edge Performance uh, uh, Rotax in it. It was about 155 horsepower, uh, built by Jason Boussat with um, Edge Performance out of Canada. And then uh, this one has a Yamaha Sidewinder in it. So uh, it's also a turbo uh, as well as my last one. And we're quite a bit higher on horsepower with this. Um, close to double so it's it's really a, a scream and a lot of fun to fly so Eddie being the uh, this version or this airplane is an XL did you need the XL stretch to do a different engine this time for the weight and balance or no well this particular airplane could have been done in the short one or this engine could have been done on the short on the short Highlander and there's people out there that are doing it uh, definitely uh, the the weight on this engine is not much different than the Rotax um, I think Just Aircraft designed the XL so they could put a Titan engine on it that's heavier. The 180 horsepower is what they like to use. And on that, uh, they really like to have this XL. But this one's really not required. Um, you get a lot of benefits though with the XL. With the longer tail, you can get more weight in the tail uh, when you need it. And also, it flies a lot more stable than the, than the original version. Just that length in that arm. The tail's bigger. The amount of weight needed to add to ballast. I have added about five pounds more weight than my last airplane uh, because of the tail being bigger and flying better. But um, I did actually add more weight to the tail in this. So 
All right, so Eddie, this is uh, round two for you in this type of airframe. Did you build this yourself, or how did you get, get some help with it? Or I actually was really lucky. I stumbled into Kevin Hoops out here at Arkansas last year. He had already started this build for himself, and he stumbled into a opportunity to start building the Badlands Traveler, which are the Badlands Stoll aircraft, which is a, a new company. So they started from the ground up, and they started designing a new wing for it. And um, that, they've got an exciting company coming up. But basically, he needed to sell this this airplane while he works on the new the new company. So uh, I jumped in midstream after he'd already done a lot of the groundwork and a lot of the investigation and figuring out how to build this thing. So I came up and we did a, a builder assist with me uh, on it. So uh, it's so much credit to him for his design and his uh, engineering. Uh, he's done a miraculous job with this thing. It's it's uh, it's phenomenal. Now this is a little different than some of the uh, others that Steve started with and others with the Apex four cylinder. This is the three cylinder, and there's only a few people that are running this now. What what do you think of that so far? Uh, and have you had a chance to compare the two? Yeah, so far, and I didn't I didn't run the Apex, um, so this is definitely a new engine, not only to me but to a lot of people. Um, we have Teal Jenkins who built the gearbox with Skytrax, who also is running one of these in his RV9. And uh, of course we got Steve Henry as well. So we still have some proving to do with this engine. I think for long-term viability for the market, but there's a lot of people jumping into it. So we're gonna get a lot of data really quick. Uh, it's a very powerful engine. It turns at a lower RPM with higher torque, which is really helpful for us so we can get longer bladed props uh, with the lower RPM and get more, get more power out of that torque. Now you mentioned off camera that uh, this is more of a stock configuration. So in reality for aviation use, what kind of continuous power are you using and takeoff power? Yeah, so uh, I'm running a stock configuration. So which means the turbo is in the stock location in the back of the engine. Um, some people like Steve had moved theirs. They upgraded the turbo and moved it to the side so they could shove the engine back farther. Um, helps them a little bit with CG. Uh, where I probably have a little more forward CG, but we wanted to keep it stock for simplicity and for tuning and to not go too far into the experimental engine uh, testing. We, we really wanted to keep it a little more stock uh, to where we had a little bit more reliability where we weren't going out on a limb. So and much. what is that as, as a shaft horsepower? Yeah. So the stock engine itself can run around 210 or so uh, with the stock engine just as is. Um, Glenn at Hypersports, kudos to them, they're amazing. They tune a, a lot of our engines, pretty much everybody that's running these engines. And this thing could be tuned to over 300 horsepower with the stock setup. Uh, it requires some bigger injectors, maybe a new map sensor, but um, but they're running this thing quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm running a little bit less than that, uh, maybe around 270, 280 here today. I um, mean, we've got some more testing and tuning to do on it too, so. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, and so much more. All right, so let's let's talk about what pulls this thing through the air. How are you liking the uh, the NR props? So this is I had another NR prop on my last airplane. It was a 79 inch three blade, um, and these things are really light, very durable, and uh, they've 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 proven themselves. Really, the scimitar shape is beautiful. It's all carbon fiber um, with the stainless steel protection on them, and um, they've they've held up really well. And there, there's a reason why some of the best winning uh, most winningest airplanes are running this prop because it's re it's really effective now mine i'm running an 88 inch today i just took it out of the box actually when i got here so this is a new prop for me and it's pulling really really well
All right, so let's let's talk the other part about uh, flying stole is actually getting it to land and stop. And I see you're running Acnes. Yeah. Talk, talk about what um, product this is and how you like it so far. So I'd worked with uh, Matt McSwain at Acme Aero uh, pr previously on my uh, on my original Devil Girl, and their their quality and their service has been exceptional. So I've I've really been happy with them. So I was really fortunate that when I stumbled into this. Kevin had already been working with Acme Aero and had them design this gear leg. Actually, Kevin designed the gears and he drew it up and had uh, Acme make make these custom gear legs. Um, and then these are the uh, Black Ops uh, shocks from Acme as well, which is what I had on my last airplane, uh, which is a testament to, to Acme. They're, they're such great shocks. And then, uh, so I went to uh, Behringer Brakes, which I didn't have before. And today we're running the, uh, this is a 21 inch uh, tire and I siped these tires and cut out the grooves. Uh, these grooves are already on it, but I cut these grooves to give a little more of a knobby grip in the uh, soft terrain. Now, does that make a big difference over just smooth tires on, on grass and uh, turf and so forth? Absolutely. Uh, these, these really can grab into the dirt and the grass and even pavement. They're going to get a much better grip uh, like this. So for this kind of operation, uh, when you're really trying to get every little bit that helps when with competitions, uh, you do what you can. And if you know it works, you do it. And the main purpose of this is not so you can drop it like it's hot up high in the air. It's really to be able to absorb energy on the ground, correct? Absolutely. Um, this, uh, you want to absorb energy in, in your landing and then in your braking. And uh, all of these components are really crucial for high performance. The, the brakes, the tires, the shocks. Uh, not enough can be said for how important that is in this type of flying. So, Double Girl 2 is really fresh. Uh, I haven't done a lot of in cruise testing and, and experimenting. Um, this thing climbs out uh, at about 50, 52 miles an hour to give me the best angle to climb. And um, I can cruise easily at 105 to 110. I could go 120 if I want to just burn gas. but. Um, the, the engine's got more than enough pull and the prop can do, can do it uh, for sure. But it's, it's, the airplane and the airframe is uh, comfortable at 100, 100 miles an hour. That's just where it likes to live. So your best angle of climb is at 52 miles per hour? Absolutely, yeah. That, that's when I can hang this thing up and just get it to go. Uh, can you can, can you even hold your neck up when you're uh, at that kind of approach or you know, it is definitely a, a screamer and we got to do some of that out here today at Arkansas uh, just having a little fun and just holding that power in and just cranking it up and and, and, and it gets your attention it's a, it's a lot of fun um, so here is my let me get some good some of the features we have here uh, obviously the Dynon the uh, HDX Skyview um, it's it's been an amazing it's my first uh, time flying with a Dynon um, but it's it's miraculous everything is in this thing the autopilot controls all of my navigation engine instruments I don't need anything else up there and one of the cool features too is I don't have any throttle uh, anywhere on the uh, on the th on the uh, quadrant there my throttle is here on the flap lever where I've got um, a throttle uh, motorcycle type grip so this rotates uh, I like it rotating forward because of a push motion for me so forward is that way and then I can release it or I can lock it in place and then it also doubles as a flap lever so I click it back for the flaps and then to go back down I just move it to the left and drop them so I can control the flaps and the throttle at the same time without having to go back and forth. Um, on uh, on this quadrant is my electric trim and an autopilot disconnect and a kind of a panic switch that I can push if I got disoriented that the autopilot would kick on and automatically level the airplane uh, if you got disoriented. Up here is my devil girl and nasty girl switch. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's my different tunes for just normal operation. And then when I put race fuel in it, I use a VP-110 and switch it to Nasty Girl for competition. So that's kind of a fun little thing uh, we got going. And then up here is all my switches to keep the nice clean panel. We put the, uh, the labeled rocker switches up here. So uh, battery, ECU, a couple of fuel pumps, an auxiliary water pump, because I have two water pumps, electric water pumps in here and all the avionics and lights and i also have a a heater a high and low heater that's uh pumping in here i don't need it that much in texas and one of my favorite features is my phone 
goes right up here so, so I can keep it up there and use it as a secondary form of navigation for for flight if I want uh, so that's pretty cool um, that's uh, awesome I love it yeah and then of course the view uh, it, it's just amazing um, the one of the other cool features um, that Kevin designed in this is the uh, the PDM the power distribution module which is in the rear of the airplane which controls all the electronics so you can program everything that runs electronically with parameters it all it's all the internal circuitry that controls a, a circuit breaker with internal circuit breakers and you can set parameters for when what temperature you want your water pump to kick on or do you want your landing lights to wig wag or do you want them to just go straight you can control how long they wig wag or what at what sequence it, uh, it's all pretty amazing, including the starter. There's just a single little push button on my flap lever rather than uh, a high voltage type switch or key or large push button that requires large wires. So everything was thought through and, um, and the design came out incredible. All right, Eddie, so where can we find you online to follow you in your adventures as you continue to expand your horizons of competition aviation? Yes, uh, come see me on Facebook. I love chatting with people and uh, people love to find out more information. Uh, Eddie Sanchez, E-D-D-I-E, -D -D -E, and Sanchez is spelled with an S on the end, S-A-N-C-H-E-S -E uh, on Facebook. And then uh, Devil Girl underscore 48, underscore stole is t-o-l for instagram uh yeah and we're going to try and get some youtube videos together and uh get us some, get some fans that want to see all this so it's it's incredible <laughs>